But your honor, members of the jury, roses are red, violets are blue. I love peanut butter. Therefore, you must acquit my client of all these charges. <laughs> well, if you find yourself in a court of law defended by an attorney who makes that kind of an argument, you better try to get your money back because you're a victim of irrelevant conclusion. It's one of the seven relevance fallacies that we're going to study. Fallacies or relevance happen because we try to use premises and are not really connected with the conclusion or at all. They're irrelevant and they're immaterial. Now, I just gave you a very silly example of an irrelevant conclusion fallacy. Some of you might recall, however, that um, attorneys use these kinds of arguments in their defense all the time. There was the case of Mr. O.J. Simpson in Los Angeles, double homicide, represented by Johnny Cochran, a very skilled attorney. And it seems that there was a bloody glove introduced in evidence against the defendant. Well, Mr. Cochran, the defense counsel, noticed that the glove did not seem to fit Mr. Simpson. So he argued straight face to the jury, well, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Well, that may be a nice alliteration, Mr. Cochran, but the fact that the glove doesn't seem to fit now, the defendant doesn't mean that we must acquit the defendant of all of the charges against the defendant. Let's take a look at seven very popular, very common fallacies. You and I have probably engaged in using these uh, throughout our, our uh, adult life and uh, maybe even as a child. The first one is called ad ignorantia, and that's when we try to say that lack of evidence actually proves something. It doesn't. How many times have you heard people argue that, maybe you yourself have tried to argue that, well, since nobody has disproved the claims of astrology, then the claims of astrology must be true. No, 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 no. Lack of evidence proves nothing. Whoever asserts a claim has the responsibility for proving the claim. Lack of evidence proves nothing either way. The second informal fallacy of relevance we study is ad veracundiam, and that is the argument from false authority. Now, just because I'm an expert in subparticle physics doesn't mean that I'm an expert on child raising. Children often argue to their parents that, well, since Alfred Einstein, Albert Einstein, uh, doesn't wear socks, then I shouldn't have to wear socks. Hmm. Put those socks on, all right? <laughs> The next one is called ad hominem, and it's probably the most, most popular, most used in political debates uh, and dorm bull sessions and, and around a cup of coffee where we attack a person rather than attack their idea or rather than refute their claim. And this comes in two varieties. Abusive, which is when we attack the person for some attribute that they have no control over, they be bald or obesely uh, overweight or something of that nature, and we dismiss their claim based upon this irrelevant factor of their individuality. The other is circumstantial. Ad hominem circumstantial is when we lump people into a category and deny that person's claim because they happen to be a member of the category or even associated with it. That's when we call a person a liberal or a conservative or a libertarian, and we dismiss the individual's claim, which may have merit apart from their affiliations. The next we have is ad populum. Now, ad populum, you can actually hear the word popular, and it's just exactly what you would expect. Uh, popular emotion, uh, the uh, mass rule, uh, mass appeal. Uh, just because a lot of people believe that the Earth is flat, does not necessarily mean that the Earth is flat. Actually, there was a time when a lot of people believed that the Earth was flat. That did not make it so. Ad misericordium is the next one we'll study. This is the argument from pity. You may recall another very famous murder case, double murder case, uh, when uh, two brothers were accused of shotgunning to death their parents. After they were found guilty and were facing the death penalty, their attorney argued straight faced to the court, Your Honor, you can't give these boys the death penalty. Why? 
They're orphans. Oh, how did they become orphans? Hmm, I see. You can see that arguing from misery or circumstance is not a very good defense. Then there's ad baculum. Ad baculum, baculum actually in Latin means stick or bat. So this is when we use force to argue that, uh, uh, let's say, I'm going to very seriously read your student evaluations of my performance in this class as I calculate your final grade. Okay? That's an implied threat. And people use that. And that doesn't make what they claim happen to be true. And the last one, of course, is the ignoratio elenchi. And that is the irrelevant conclusion. Roses are red, violets are blue. I love peanut butter, and therefore, you must acquit my client of all these horrible, horrible charges. Oh, my.